Hello, everyone, and welcome to my LunarCon panel. Um, if everyone can hear me okay, if you could cheer at the panel, that'd be wonderful. Awesome. All right. So, interviewing and content creation. Now, we're going to be spending the next hour together. So, to start with, I'd really like if everyone could just get really comfortable, relax in your chair or your bed or wherever you're watching this or listening to this, and get a warm drink and just chill. We'll be here for the next hour, so we should all be as comfortable as possible. Now, to begin with, I'm sure some of you are wondering, okay, but who are you? Why do you have this panel? And that brings us to the first section of my panel. That did not cooperate. All right. Who am I and why am I here? Now, for those of you that I just gave existential dread to, I apologize. But I promise this isn't about that. So, to start off, my name's Nobutaka, but I go by Nobu. And I am a content creator here in Final Fantasy XIV. And I'm actually host of the Coffee and Carbuncles podcast. That is not the right image. All right. Well, let me see if I can pull up the right one. There we go. Coffee and Carbuncles. <laughs> All right. Now, I've been hosting this podcast for about a year now. And some of you may hear that and think, okay, well, why is someone who's only been doing content creation for one year the one who's up here talking about content creation and interviewing? And truth be told, I feel that since I'm a bit more new to content creation than some of my peers, I feel like it gives me a unique way to, to better communicate what it's like starting out content creation. Now, a brief disclaimer, I only know about interviews. While some of this may apply to VTubing and Twitch streaming, it's not really my forte, so take what you hear today with a grain of salt. So, you want to be a content creator. The first thing you're going to need to do is pick a theme, a unique flavor. Make sure this is something that you want and that you're happy with. Not what you think people will latch on to. Not, you know, does doing this make someone else happy? Or do I think that having this specific type of content will get more views? Do something that will make you happy. If you're like, hey, I'd really love to have a persona of being a cowboy, then by all means, embrace it, be a cowboy. If you want to have a fursona even, go for it. But just remember that it needs to be something that you want to stick with and something that makes you happy. Now, if it ends up not making you happy or it ends up being something that you know you want to change keep in mind you can change your theme your persona all of it at any time if one idea doesn't work switch it up find what you like and find what works for you all right sorry about that now when you're thinking of how to start content creation you might be wondering, well, what do people want to hear about? What type of content do people want? And again, just don't. 
it's a lot better if you do what you want, and we'll get to why later. So, when you're making content, do you want to do your content live like this, or do you want to do your content pre-recorded, and that way you can release it later? Or do you want to do a mix of both? Well, that's entirely up to you. Keep in mind that there are advantages and disadvantages to both. More off-the-cuff, sort of, you know, funny, sporadic, random things can happen in a live recording. But at the same time, there's also a higher chance that, you know, you might have accidents, you might have slip-ups, and you have to keep in mind that obviously your audience will be exposed to all of that. Whereas with pre-recorded, you're looking at a lot more time to edit things, but at the same time, all of those mistakes, all those issues that pop up, you can go ahead and get rid of those, and your audience may never see them. Which also brings us to scripted or not scripted. Now, obviously, you can go into a live thing scripted. You can go into a recording that you're going to release and edit later, not scripted, and that's all up to you. I usually go for a mix of both because I think that if we have if we have guidelines if we have you know a skeleton of a script it can help keep us on track but at the same time you don't want to be so forced to follow a script that if someone says something really interesting that you want to dive into you can't stop your or you can't have to stop yourself and go, well, I really want to explore that, but I have this script and I need to follow it, so I can't. And to me, that just seems a bit too restrictive. So I couldn't imagine doing that. But when we're getting into all this talk of content creation, of, you know, I, I want to be a content creator, I'm picking a theme, I'm thinking of how I'm going to do my content and present my content. There's an obvious question that might pop up in your head, which is, well, isn't there already a lot of 14 content? Don't a lot of podcasts, YouTubers, etc. already exist? I'm not sure that I'm comfortable or confident trying to jump into that big pool. And I'm here to tell you, you know what? Don't listen to that voice. Um, do it. I mean. I, a year ago, thought that there were already plenty of 14 podcasters, YouTubers, etc. And so I was hesitant. And ultimately, you just kind of have to suppress those thoughts. Look at people like Anodic Scribe, who only started two years ago. If two years ago he had listened to those thoughts, he wouldn't be around. If most of the 14 content creators who came after probably 2.5 listened to that thought, then they wouldn't be around now. So ultimately, if you want to do content creation, if you have an idea for content creation, go ahead and dive in. Try it. Literally nothing bad can come of it. But following that, I know you're now thinking, okay, but what if people don't like my idea? I mean, what if I decide, you know, yeah, let's go ahead and do content creation, and what if people just don't go for it? Well, all I can say with that is give it time. When you first start out doing content creation, there is a good chance that you won't have a large audience, and we'll get into that later, but what you need to do is if you put out content, you need to have faith that some people will eventually like that content and come to that content. Now, as we continue, a brief note on equipment and hosts. Much of this is going to be based on both personal preference and financial capability. So we're not going to be spending too much time here. First off is finding a hosting platform. If you're wanting to do a podcast, you're looking at platforms like Anchor. If you're wanting to do 
a live stream gaming, you're looking at YouTube, you're looking at Twitch. If you want to put out content videos, you're looking at possibly twi Twitch VODs. You're looking primarily at YouTube, I'm guessing. And a lot of that just comes down to you need to do research and you need to find the best platform for the type of content that you want to create. To that, I say that search engines like Google are going to be your friend, but also look at people that are doing similar content to yourself and think, okay, well, what are they using? What do they recommend when they speak about their content? And then proceed from there. Now, alongside hosting platforms, you also need to look at software. For this presentation, I'm using OBS Studio. For my podcasting, I usually use Reaper because I just personally like that as a way to edit um, my interviews. For hosting the interviews and recording the interviews themselves, I actually use a Discord chat bot but I'm slowly moving away from that to OBS Studio. So really figure out what type of software helps for what you want to do. And just like with platform hosting, um, just look at what other people in the sphere that you want to get involved in are using and then consider trying that. You don't necessarily have to stick with it, but at least give it a try chop around, see what's good for you. With both software and hosting platforms, keep in mind that there are a lot of them that are free and there are some that aren't. Which brings me back to what I said earlier about to some degree, it comes down to financial capability, but really this isn't as important as you think. Especially when you're starting out, you won't necessarily need all of the bells and whistles that an expensive platform comes with. As long as you have a microphone, as long as you have a method of recording, and as long as you have a place to put that recording, you should be fine. Now, with equipment, with starting content creation, Another thing to keep in mind also along with that software is, like I just said, expensive doesn't always equal better. Starting out, you probably won't need all the bells and whistles of an expensive platform or expensive software, but keep in mind that even if you do get that, you may never even use them throughout your entire content creation career, which is why I say shop around and make sure to look at what various software can do for you and make sure that you're aware of what you're paying for when you're getting that software. All right. So now that you've decided to be a content creator, you're looking at software, you're looking at themes, you have an idea of what you want to do with your content, and now we're at the fun part. You're like, all right, well, I want to get some guests, and I want to interview them, and I want to talk about Final Fantasy XIV, because it's the best game ever, and I play it, and they play it, and so let's chat about it. So, how do you reach out? Now, when you're starting out, I'm going to level with you. Chances are you may not be able to get some really high profile content creator. If you're having your first podcast ever and you're like, I'm going to interview Husky or Zeppla or Lucy Pyre or whoever, um, there's probably not a high chance of that working but you can always try and trying is what matters and if you want to reach out to really well-known content creators make sure to look at their profiles online um usually on x or twitch or something or youtube and you'll usually see an email to reach out to them or an agent 
and shoot your shot. Nothing can go wrong with that. But on a more realistic level, start out with a friend or, you know, someone in game that you know that if you reach out to them, chances are they'll be like, yeah, I'd love to talk about that. Let's do it. But just make sure that regardless of the notoriety of who you're reaching out to, make sure that one, you have a solid idea of what you're going to talk about. Because the last thing you want to do when you're inviting someone to spend their time to help raise your profile is waste that time. I would never invite someone on if I didn't have a clear outline and idea of where are we taking this interview and what is our main topic going to be about. <laughs> Chili. <laughs> awesome. Um, yes, you should probably have a general idea of what your content is going to be about when you're talking and doing content creation. And even if you don't stick to that theme, you know, it goes back to what I said earlier. If you're doing a recording and halfway through you get off topic, if 10 minutes in you get off topic, go for it, follow that, and you know what? When you're done with that recording and you're putting that recording out to the world, if you initially invited that person on to talk about rating, but you guys spent 50 minutes talking about fishing, Label the episode a fishing episode, and you run with it. And I'm sure it'll be awesome. All right. So, you've reached out. You've got a few people interested, but as things go, a few people have said no. And so, what do you do if they say no? The answer is simple. You accept the rejection with grace and humility. Don't try to bargain. Don't try to force anyone. Don't email back going, well, what about this time? And I know that you're free this time, so why can't you just let that go? If someone declines, politely accept that they declined and move on. It will never end well if you try and force a guest. And ultimately, it will not look good on you. And if you're just starting content creation, or even if you've been doing content creation for a long time, the last thing you do, or the last thing you want, is to do that and have people going, well, they're pretty rude and pushy, and I had to say no six times and then block them. You definitely do not want that reputation. But what if they don't respond at all? Along those same lines, just let it go. I mean, if you reach out to someone, it's been five months, part of you is like, all right, well, maybe they lost the email. Maybe I should reach out again. And I get where you're coming from, and I understand that feeling. But in general, I just let it go. I'd look at other people that you know either have or will respond and just keep it moving from there. No hard feelings, a lot like if they say no. Ultimately, all of this is for fun. It's about choice, and you just keep it moving. But let's stop with the negative views. What if someone responded? What if they're like, yeah, I would love to come on, and I would love to talk about this, that, or the other, and see where things go? Well, first off, congratulations. You just got over one of the hardest parts of content creation, especially interviewing, and that's awesome. It's a great feeling, and I'm happy for you. But now you have this person who's waiting for you to give them a schedule, waiting for you to give them a topic and guidance, and you have to figure out where to go from there. And what I'll tell you is if someone has been nice enough to now devote their time to you, be as kind as possible to that person. Start by building a rapport. Usually, if I'm going to have a guest on Coffee and Carbuncles, I will spend a solid two weeks in their DMs. I will become their best friend. I will know as much about them as possible. And I know some of you might be like, well, that sounds intense. 
The reason for that is because if you're talking to someone and you barely know them and they barely know you and you give them a a bare bones script of what I said earlier about, you know, these are the topic points I want to hit. This is what we're going to talk about. It will be the most robotic, flat, boring interview that you could think of because you've got your defenses up. They've got their defenses up. It could be that, you know, they barely know you and you're barraging them with questions and they just want to get out of there. But if you and the person you're interviewing have a good rapport, if, you know, you two have been talking for like two weeks and you get along well, and maybe you have an inside joke or two, that interview is going to be amazing. They're going to laugh. You're going to laugh. You're going to feel fine going off topic and talking about who knows what wherever the conversation leads. And that's the type of magic that you want in your content. As an interviewer, the more I can make my person, my guest, laugh and go off topic and tell some wild story, that's just going to make the interview that much better. And I say run with it. Treat them like a person. Treat them like your friend. You know, just... Be kind to them and you'll get the most out of them and they'll get the most out of that interview. And then the people who listen to it will get the most out of their interview. And that's what matters. But there is one more thing we have to mention now that you have your guest, now that you're trying to build a rapport. And this, at least in my opinion, is probably the single hardest part of content creation when it comes to interviews. scheduling. I know a lot of you probably game with friends, and that could extend to 14, it could extend to D&D, it could extend to pretty much any type of gaming. You know how difficult scheduling is, even when you're not talking about content creation. Now imagine asking someone, especially if they live in a different country, hey, when can you put aside an hour, two hours, whatever, to sit down focus purely on me and do an interview. And if they're a really well-known content creator, if they're a really busy person, then that can end up being pretty complicated. And even if you're like, all right, well, this person probably has a lot of free time, real life pops up. <laughs> there are times where at the very last minute, I literally had to completely cancel an interview five minutes beforehand because my cat got sick. There was another person that I wanted to interview and they ended up being in the hospital for literally about four months. And so that interview was put off for four months and that's how it goes. Real life creeps in and the best thing I can tell you is since you're the one asking them to take up their time, with you, be as flexible as possible within reason. If someone's like, well, can we do half the interview now and half later? Run with it. Make sure that you're being as accommodating to your guest as possible. All right, so you've got your guest, your scheduling is done. And now it's time to record. So, what do we do? Well, usually what I like to do is 15 to 20 minutes before any recording, I will ask my guests to join me in chat. And I usually start chatting before even recording. And during this time, this brings us back to building a better rapport. Usually at this time, my guest and I are joking, we're laughing, we're talking about stuff that has literally nothing to do with the interview. We're getting our yawns out, we're getting our giggles out. There have been times where my guest and I had a full chat that I wish I had been recording, but then 30 minutes later I'm like, oh right, we're here for an interview. And then we have to completely shelf that topic or we'll add bits of it to the interview and we'll go from there. 
But during that time, that's your like make the guest comfortable, make sure you both have drinks, make sure you're ready to actually do this interview. That's your prep time. So make the most of it. Usually at this time, it's when my guest and I will probably get coffee and then be like, all right, we'll be back in five minutes and we'll do this. But when those five minutes are up, you're both 100%, you're ready, and you're engaged. And then you start recording. Now, remember the terms when you're recording of guest and host. This isn't completely about you. You've let this person into your space, and a big part of having them there is going to be hospitality. So make sure they're comfortable. The way I do this is I try and avoid any sort of gotcha questions. I will usually send my guest all of my main questions about one to two weeks before we do the recording. This gives them time to come up with answers. This gives them time to message me back and go, I'm not comfortable talking about this. And when that happens, delete the question, move on. Because like we talked about earlier, if you don't really know your guest, if you're having an interview and you ask a guest some type of hard-hitting question or controversial topic that you didn't tell them about, not only are they going to put up walls on that topic, but you just basically put a dark cloud over the entire rest of the interview. So please don't do that to yourself, and especially don't do that to your guest. So that does bring us to the topic of controversial topics. It's a big elephant in the room with a lot of recordings. My personal take on it is if your guest brings them up, you can steer into the topic or you can avoid them. But keep in mind, if you bring it up, your guest has every right to do the same. You have a decision to make, and it's very important to make. If you or your guest decide that you're uncomfortable, please just respect each other and just back out choose a different topic, or if you've made them so uncomfortable that for whatever reason they want to end the interview, that's their discretion. And so you just kind of have to accept that. But another thing that you have the ability to do is if you bring up a topic that makes them uncomfortable or they do it and the entire rest of the interview goes well and you're recording it for release later, there is nothing wrong with politely messaging them and going, hey, why don't we just edit that out? There is no reason that you should be wasting your time, or especially your listeners' time, with something that's going to make everyone feel uncomfortable or that's going to show that you made someone else uncomfortable. Just edit it out. Get rid of it. If you and your guest both agree that hey, this shouldn't be there, and let's just act like it never happened, it never happened. And your audience is literally never going to know because you've edited it out. So, you've done your recording, you've maybe had to split it, but at, in the end, you have this interview between you and your guest. After recording... I usually like to ask my guest how they feel that the interview went. If there's anything that they would like trimmed or removed. And then we usually have about half an hour of post-recording chit-chat. And I let them know when the episode will be up. And then I ask them for feedback. And that post-recording chat is just as important, if not more important, than your pre-recording chat, because there might have been a topic that you touched on during the interview that you want to talk more about, or there might be a controversial topic that you know one of you tried to steer away from, but you want to chat about sort of off the record. That's a solid time for that. During that time, you're also going to go, well, thank you for being on, thank you for giving me your time, you know, is there anything you want removed? And if you and the guest really got on and felt like that was a great interview, this was a topic that maybe we didn't have enough time to hit on completely, go ahead and ask them to come back. 
Ask them if they're another content creator, if maybe you can be part of their content, both as a means to repay them, but also so that you can promote the two of you together. And what I mean by that is, for instance, let's say Chili and Paul of Moogle go around. If they were on Coffee and Carbuncles and the episode went great, I might suggest or they might suggest, hey, do you want to come on Moogle go around? And when they do that, that initial episode of them on my podcast, we're both promoting that. And that later episode of me on their podcast, we're both promoting that. And if people really enjoyed that first episode of the three of us together chatting, there is no reason for them to try and get away from that second episode. They're probably going to be pretty thrilled about it. And so a lot of reciprocal content promotion is never a bad idea. Remember, we're all in this together. It is not a competition. I know that streaming, especially like on Twitch, may make it seem like a competition at times, but we're all part of the 14 community together. And if someone wants to check out 14 content, especially if you're a podcast creator, a YouTuber, or both, if you have your podcast on YouTube, there's never a reason to feel like competition is there because someone could listen to an episode of Moogle Go Round. And then they could listen to an episode of Coffee and Carbuncles. And then they could watch a Zeppelo video. And they can put all of that on their own time frame. And none of us have to be in competition for that person's time. Because they will get to all of that when it suits them. And that is beautiful. That means that content creators do not need to be aggressive towards one another. Also, along that whole line of content promotion and having content creators on and being, you know, with other content creators on their platforms, say that someone isn't a content creator. Then in that case, I usually would still keep in touch with them. I would usually make sure to still drop them a line sometimes in game because, again, you might want to have them on for later content. Or, you know, they might get feedback on the episode from their friends and their connections that you didn't. And not only do you want that feedback, but you also don't want to put someone in the position where they feel like you exploited them and you had them on for just a little bit of content and then kind of discarded them. I also think that a big part, especially in the 14 community, of keeping in touch with one another is we have big events like FanFest. We have big events like here at LunarCon. Chances are you are not just going to run into someone in the 14 community once and then never again, especially if you collaborate on content. And you don't want that meeting to be awkward. I don't want to, and I know I keep using him as an example, but I don't want to run into Chili after, you know, I had him on for one episode, didn't talk to him for six years and then have him be like, oh, yeah, I was on an episode of Coffee and Carbuncles once and then you ghosted me. It, it creates an awkward aura, essentially, when you run into each other. Also, return guests are a thing. Return guests are great. Because you already have a rapport. You don't need to build a new rapport with them. And if you have a really solid rapport, you just carry on where you left off, and it makes the episode that much better. Now, if there is someone that you want to interview, and someone you want to chat with, and someone you want to know on a more personal level, having an interview podcast is also a great way to do that. Because personally, I just started content creation a year ago. I am as much of a fan of a lot of really well-known content creators as all of you are. And there are some content creators that I'm like, man, I would really like to try and be their friend, and I would really like to try and get to know them better. And there are times where I'm just like, hey, let's sit down for an interview and let's get to know each other better. And it's a pretty cool feeling. 
Um, I would say suppress your your fanning as much as possible um, during those times, especially if you have a lot better known content creator than yourself that you get to interview. But also have fun with it. I mean, it is it is an absolute blast. But I do have two more things that I want everyone to keep in mind when it comes to recording. First off, please remember spoiler warnings for listeners. And I know that seems like a silly thing to bring up 36 minutes into this. But keep in mind that everyone progresses through especially new content at different rates. And if, for instance, let's take the new patch that's about to come out. If I'm having an interview with someone and we both just did MSQ and the patch is only out for about two weeks, I'm probably going to put a spoiler warning on that episode. And when we are getting to the part where we're going to talk about the patch or if I'm in post-production and we're getting to the part where we talked about the patch, I'm going to reiterate that spoiler warning because as much fun as you might have had in your conversation, you don't want to take away that fun from the person who's spending time listening to your content. So please keep that in mind. Another thing is, and I know people have varying opinions on this, but I think that it's a really solid idea to put trigger warnings at the start of episodes. If you're going to have an episode where especially post-production, this is great. If you're going to have an episode where your intended topic was pretty heavy or during the course of your episode, your topic got really heavy, then I think that trigger warnings really help your audience. And they make it, they give the clear signal that you care about your audience and you care about their well-being because you're going, hey, I think that this might harm you, and if you agree that it'll harm you, maybe we shouldn't do this. What I often say when I have a trigger warning at the start of my episode is, this is what we're talking about. If you don't feel like you're in the right mindset to hear about this and discuss this, or we're getting to the topic later in the episode and you don't feel like you're in the right place to hear about it, there is absolutely nothing wrong with coming back to this episode later. There's also nothing wrong with never coming back to this episode. Ultimately, it's what makes your listener comfortable. So I would advise everyone, if you're making content, please keep that in mind. So next up, I want to talk a little about 14 content. Because 14 content creation is actually different than other content creation. And it's something that is really neat. Because when it comes to 14 content creation, there is a built-in audience. Right now, the view count for this panel says 111 people. Now, if I just randomly went out and made a podcast no one's ever heard of and titled an episode how to make a podcast about fishing and there are a million fishing podcasts yeah you could say there's a built-in audience there yeah you could say someone might pick that up and listen to it but promoting your content is going to be significantly harder whereas in final fantasy 14 there's enough when it comes to algorithms, whether that's podcast algorithms, whether that's YouTube, whether that's Twitch. If you make 14 content and you label it as such, there's a decent chance that some algorithm is going to take that content and going to push it out to other 14 players. And from my experience, both talking with 14 players and being one myself, if I see something on YouTube or a podcast or something that's like, hey, we're talking about Final Fantasy XIV, you have half my interest already. And then we're talking about this specific topic. Well, you might lose half my interest, <laughs> but at the same time, 
if it's a topic that I'm interested in, even marginally, I'll be like, all right, it's 14. It's this topic I'm interested. You just check two boxes off my list. Let's take in this content and let's see what this is about. And that's awesome. Another cool thing I've mentioned before is that in 14, we don't really have to be in competition with each other. LunarCon is a great example of that, where if you look at the guest list, you see a bunch of different content creators and people who are all interested in 14 and like this game as much as you know most of us do. And even though we're all promoting and doing different types of content, we all come together for things like LunarCon. And we can be guests on each other's interview podcasts, YouTube channels, etc. 14 has this really neat community. And I know that people have varying opinions on the community. We can set that aside. But we do have a large built-in community that makes connections pretty easy. That makes getting an audience pretty easy. and. It's awesome. All right. So we've made this content. We've taken our time. We've edited the content. We know it's 14 content. Um, yeah, it's 14 content. Yeah, we want an algorithm to pick it up. But how do we spread our content? How do we get people to, to bother to take in this content. In my opinion, the best thing you can do is go by word of mouth. Keep in mind, especially as a brand new content creator, especially as a brand new interviewer, don't expect to put out, you know, your first interview and 700 people to flock to it just because it's Final Fantasy 14. You need to let your audience grow but also, you need to give yourself time to grow as a content creator. Start with word of mouth. Ask friends and family. Ask free company members. Ask people you raid with. Hey, can you check out this content and tell me what you think of it? And by doing that, that allows them to take in that content. That allows them to share it with others but it also allows them to give feedback and for you to adjust accordingly. If we were in a situation where I know personally, if I took my very first podcast episode with my absolutely abysmal post-production skills at the time, and I put that out to, let's say, 3,000 people, I would probably get 2,900 people that go, well, what is this garbage? Yeah, it's 14 related, but just why? So a more organic growth really does benefit you in the end. I know that seeing big numbers of more well-known content creators can make you feel kind of put down and can make you feel like, well, I thought I'd do really well, but this isn't going how I hoped. Give it time. Give your podcast time. Give your friends and family time to show it to others and give your project time to grow. And I promise it will grow. Now, you may have to change it as it's growing, but for instance, I started my podcast a year ago. I'm now well over a thousand downloads. I thought I'd never reach that. I'm hosting a panel at LunarCon, guys. I mean, Give it time. Let people find your podcast or your YouTube or whatever content and just let people come to you and give it time to grow. Which brings us to a very important part of this panel. Expectations. And this is where I tell you, don't give up. So, what will your audience look like at first? The answer is what audience? <laughs> and I, I mean that seriously. Um, when you start out, like when I started out, 
I tried to keep my expectations low. I was like, you know what? My mom is going to listen to this. My dad is going to listen to this. All of my free companies, free company members, sorry, are going to say they're going to listen to this. And then my episode will probably hit about five listens and a year from now I'll stop. And and that was me starting out. Um, but I don't mean that to put anyone down. I mean that as in temper your expectations a bit. If you start out thinking you're going to have those 700 views or listens or downloads or 700 whatever, when you don't get them, that's going to crush you. And not because people don't necessarily, you know, don't want to hear what you have to say, but because you just set your expectations way too high. But if you try and keep those expectations mild, you know, thank people for listening, thank them for the feedback, you keep with it, then there's a solid chance that your podcast or your content will grow and that it'll probably exceed your expectations. If you had told me a year ago that I'd have a panel at LunarCon, I would literally laugh and walk away. If you told me that I would have more than a thousand downloads, I'd be like, cool. I assume that it's my mom and dad being very, very kind and listening to my podcast over and over and getting a bot farm. Didn't happen. We're here. So please just take, take the starting out of your content creation with, with not taking yourself too seriously. Try to, to relax and ease into it. But putting the numbers aside, completely putting that aside, putting our egos aside, which I know is a lot easier to say rather than do, Remember why you're doing content creation. If you're doing content creation because you just want to be popular and you want everyone to talk about you, I'm sorry, but in my opinion, you're doing content creation for the wrong reason. If you're doing content creation, it should be because you want to do content creation. It should be because you are interested in doing it and you think that it'll be cool, you think it'll be fun, that you do it because you want to have a good time with it. If you, I guess the best way I could say this is if you're thinking about getting into content creation, then I want you to pause and really ask yourself, am I doing this because I want to be popular or am I doing this because it's something that just personally interests me? And then I want you to look at the content you've created and go, all right, well, if one person listens to this or a million people listen to this, am I going to be happy because I spent time and effort and I made this? Yeah, the numbers are great. When you start seeing download numbers, it is such a rush and I'm not going to lie about that. But at the same time, that should be the icing on the cake. The cake itself should be, I made this content because I wanted to make this content. And making this content made me feel more fulfilled. That is the heart of any content creation. And along with that, if your content creation doesn't leave you feeling happy, it is completely fine to stop. It's completely fine to go, hey... I don't enjoy doing this, in which case don't force yourself to do something that will make you unhappy. When I first made, I would say my first three episodes of Coffee and Carbuncles, I'll be honest, I hated it. Um, I'm not someone who talks a lot. I'm sure some of you can tell my voice is getting a bit more raspy as the hour goes on. And when I finished those first three interviews, I had to spend a bunch of time in post-edit because I had never done post-production or editing before. I had to drink a lot of tea because my throat was just wrecked. It was terrible. And I literally told my parents, the last thing I ever want to hear again 
is my own voice because I got so sick of hearing it when I was doing editing. But as time went on, I stuck with it. My throat hurt less after every interview, and I enjoyed making content. I was like, I'm getting to meet all these people that I never thought I'd have a chance to talk with. I'm getting great feedback. I'm feeling more confident. And ultimately, the benefits of being a content creator really started to outweigh all of those negatives that I had focused on during the first three episodes. And that is a big part of growth as a content creator. Now, at the same time, I started, I went into probably the first seven episodes of the podcast going, all right, I'm going to make this episode and then this will probably be the last one. And then, you know, you see the downloads, it, it gets the reception that it gets and you're like, all right, I'm going to make one more and then that's going to be the last one. And then next thing I know, season one is done. And that's also just part of how it goes. Um, content creation is a wild ride. And if it's something that you're down for and something that makes you happy, do it 100%. And if you go, I really want off this ride, then stop. Don't ever force yourself to do something that makes you unhappy, especially, especially given how much time content creation can take up between planning, between editing, between, gosh, making questions, between self-promotion, between Googling posts and messing around with software. Content creation takes a while. I mean, it is, it is definitely not something you necessarily want to explore if your time is very limited or you don't have a lot of patience. But if you do, it's pretty fun. And I'm biased. Super, super biased. But I'd recommend it. I'd recommend giving it a shot. Because the more you do it, the more that you're adding to this awesome, rich tapestry that is the 14 community and that is the content creator space within the 14 community. So if you want to be part of that, go for it. Dive into the unknown, try and put your fears aside, and just go for it. Okay, well, I am missing a slide, but uh, up there in the top right, it should say, didn't you leave out a few things? And I did. And one of those is, should I be a part-time content creator or a full-time content creator? And that's completely up to you. That is a very personal choice. And I am not going to give you a shred of advice about that, except get into content creation, see if it's something that makes you happy and what your prospects look like with being a full-time content creator versus part-time and do what you want to do from there. I, the less input I feel that you have on that from other people may actually be better. Also, when we're talking about software, I talked a lot about expensive versus free software and you know, the kind of software you'll need, a microphone, um, some type of editing software, etc. But what I didn't talk a lot about was the price when it comes to that stuff. And, you know, do, do I need to start out with the most expensive stuff? And the honest question is no. You absolutely should not. Because if you are just getting into content creation, then I think that we've all seen or had those phases where we see a hobby and we're like, I want to get super into that hobby. I'm going to be so good at that hobby. That hobby is going to be awesome. And then you try that hobby for a month and now your really expensive violin or your rugby equipment or whatever is in your closet covered in dust somewhere. 
and that's money you can never get back. As long as you have some type of editing software and you have a platform and you have a microphone, you can start content creation. Now, if further on down the line, you're like, this is something I feel passionate about or serious about, and you've given yourself that time to see if this is a long-term thing for you, then that's a good time to look at, all right, well, what's a more expensive software? What's a more expensive microphone? What's the difference between this high-end microphone and that high-end microphone? Because now you're more committed to it. And that's the right time to look into spending that extra money on this. But if you're going to just start content creation and make your first podcast or what have you, don't don't go out and spend all of that extra money when you don't even know if, going by my example, if you're going to have a second bit of content or a third bit of content. Just give yourself time and also, you know, Give your wallet some time because no matter what, that starting investment when you're getting that microphone, when you're possibly paying for that host or that software, can still be a bit pricey. So just pace yourself, guys. Pace yourself. All right. All right. So we are at the last three minutes of this panel, and I don't really feel that that's enough time to answer questions. But what I am going to do is tell everyone that following this panel, I will be outside. So those of you that did come to the panel physically, well, physically in game, if you want to ask questions or hang out or what have you, go ahead, meet me outside. We can talk about things or get screenshots if you're a fan of the podcast. Whatever. I'm... I'm here for you guys. So with that said, with using what little time we have to admittedly skip the question and answer part of this, I just want to say thank you. And this circles back to what I said at the start of the panel. Thank you very much for giving me your time and for spending this past hour with me. It's meant a lot. I hope that you guys had a lot of fun with it. And for those of you that came to this panel thinking about content creation, or maybe you've already started a bit of content creation, I hope this inspires you to keep going with it. Because that starting bit, those first few months, just like getting into any new hobby, it can be pretty rough. The numbers can be daunting. The time can be hard. but. If you keep going with it and you decide that, hey, I'm having fun, I'm enjoying this, I want to be a content creator, just know that those of us in the 14 content creation space will welcome you with open arms. When I started making 14 content, I fully expected people to be like, who are you? Why are you here? Get out. And I can personally tell you that what I experienced was the complete opposite. So many people in the 14 content creation space went, hey, we're so happy to see another content creator. If you have questions, let us know. If you have problems, let us know. And so I am perfectly willing to do that for any of you. So if you're thinking of or you're getting into 14 content creation, let me end this panel by saying, welcome. Welcome to the space. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of LunarCon.